Hello and welcome back to the Rails Quest channel. I'm Caleb Lape and today I'm going to show you how to move a time-consuming API call from the controller to a background job. Now we're going to get into why you would want to do this as I go about the process, but right now let me show you the applications so that you know what we're going to do today. So I've been kicking the tires with Rails 8 and it's been truly impressive. It's been a joy to use so far. Let me just show you with very little to no JavaScript what I've been able to accomplish so far. So it's a typical to-do to -do list app, kind of like the hello world of building a ra uh, Rails application or any kind of web application for that matter. But here's, here's how it works. I mean, it's nothing too groundbreaking, but it is cool that this doesn't need hardly any JavaScript. This is using Rails 8 with the latest version of Turbo to update the DOM seamlessly. These are, when I click this, there's a little bit of JavaScript that submits a form, and that's about all it does. And there's a little bit of JavaScript that shows and hides this notification. And there's a little bit of JavaScript here to show a, a text field instead of the text there. But these are tiny little sprinkles of JavaScript to make this all work. It's, it's been awesome so far. So let me show you what this app does. It's not just your typical to-do list. You see it's called chat to do and here's why. We can go to chat GPT and ask it to create a to-do list for us. So I call these rambles because you can just ramble to it and it will create an organized to-do list for you. What we were just playing with was the result of this actual text. So let's create a to-do list. Now you'll notice we're making an API call to chat GPT and there's a little bit of a delay. There's a delay in the rendering of the page. So we're, we can't do anything about the amount of time it takes for ChatGPT to give us a response, but we can do something about our app's responsiveness. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment. So you can see ChatGPT created to-do list with sections, grab an umbrella before heading out. Uh, you can go grocery shopping, get all this stuff that we mentioned, go to the library and return a book. All right, so that's pretty neat, and let's let's make it better. So here's the plan for our implementation. We're going to, instead of redirecting directly to this to-do list, when we create a to-do list, we're going to redirect to an intermediary page that's gonna show uh, some sort of loading indicator. And then from there, we're going to be redirected to this to-do list when it's ready. So that way, it frees up the controller to continue serving responses for other people. We're not using up a thread there, and the, you get a page back quickly, and the user has something to look at to know that it's not just stuck or frozen. They're not going to spam the refresh button. Okay, let's get to the code. Let's start with the ramble results controller test. So when we create a ramble result, we want to redirect to a different spot. We want to redirect to a ramble We'll, we'll get to the assertion about enqueuing a job in just a moment. So I'm going to keep this test skipped for now. We're going to go down to create and see what's going on under the hood. So here's where we generate the to-do list. So what do we need to change about this controller in order to start moving in the direction that I said? Well, first of all, we've got the test. I'm going to com comment out generating the actual to-do list for now and you're going to see that there's actually a failure here. The error is uninitialized constant result. And that's because we're passing in an incompatible result type here. So let's fix this up real quick. We don't need the ramble ID in the params. These are mostly just the tests that are generated by Rails Scaffold. This is all brand new stuff. So yeah, result ID, we're not using that either. We'll go down to the result params definition. We're actually only accepting a result type right now. We're gonna use that type to create the actual to-do list. So we can still create a result now I'm expecting to see a different error. Forgot to change this to um, to do list. OK, 
count didn't, didn't change by one, but by zero. Okay, let's switch over to the test log. Take a look at why. Unprocessable content. So let's take a look at ramble result model. I have a feeling that that's the reason why, even though I don't see the actual error. So we have a not null constraint. Um, migration. Result ID. So we're going to relax that constraint. And we shouldn't see a database error anymore for this. Cannot redirect to nil. Okay, that's, that's more along the lines of what I was expecting. So we're going to redirect to the ramble result itself. Um, ramble result. There we go. Oh, yeah. So now we have a passing test. And we can take a look in the browser and see that this is the case. All right, so, so far so good. Now we get to decide what we want to do next. How about, since we already have this page, let's go to Show, and we're going to, we're going to have a condition. If ramble result is present, then we're going to link to else get rid of all that stuff cool no I like what I had better sometimes the AI doesn't make good choices let's keep it simple so it's going to show loading and then if there is a ramble result it's going to show view all right now we need to Let's go ahead and create that job. What are we going to call this? To-do list generator. To-do list generator. Or, yeah, naming conventions. Generate to-do list. OK. So let's take a look at. Um, how we want to let's take a look at how we want to implement this in the controller at ramble result dot generate to do list later. Okay, so that's going to generate to-do list job, perform later, self. Okay, so we're going to expect a ramble result. And that's basically the process to move this generate to-do list line from the controller into the background job. You can see this line is exactly the same. There's probably more we could do to make it cleaner, but I'm just gonna leave it this way for now because this is an incremental step toward uh, something a little bit better, right? So now when we create a to-do list, it will, when we create a ramble result, it will enqueue a job, which a uh, solid queue will run at a later time, right? Hopefully pretty soon. And then whenever it runs, it's going to assign the generate to-do list to the result, all right? So let's go back to our ramble and let's create a to-do list. Forgot to save, that is a good point. Loading, 
Okay, so far so good. So what we're gonna show now is a loading indicator, right? A very basic one. And if I refresh, take a look at our development log. Oh, I know. We were depending on save before, so now we need to add the save to this. So we just generated to-do lists and didn't save them to the result. So now we've enqueued. Let's take a look at it. It looks like generate to-do list job ran and succeeded. And now we have a button to go and view our to-do list. That's pretty neat. And I think we can do even a little bit better. So let's take another step. And this is actually something I'm excited about because it's a, it's a Rails 8 sort of a, a new to Turbo in Rails 8. So we're going to take a look at the docs for this real quick. You can add, you can add a Turbo Stream From before we do anything with that. Let's, let's look at the to-do, uh, note the Ramble Results Show page. We're going to Ramble result. Okay, is that going to do anything? Well, let's check it out. Create a to-do list. Oh, sometimes AIs are more trouble than they're worth, huh? Okay, create to-do list. Loading, nothing's happening. Okay, so it did not update. I had to click, I had to hit um, refresh to make that happen. So this is a little bit tricky because at least to my eyes, it was not documented anywhere except here in the code. So Turbo Broadcastable is automatically included when you have active job present in your application. So if you've enabled active job, then you have this turbo broadcastable concern mixed into your models. Well, what does that get us? What it gets us is this convenient helper. Broadcast refreshes. So at its most simple, And you can see it's just, there's nothing special going on here. It's just a vanilla Rails app. And this is some new Rails magic. So let's see what that got us, if anything. Create a to-do list. So nothing happened. Let's take a look at why. So we have the sign stream name and we are connected. did apparently broadcast. But it's possible that Oh, creates updates, creates updates and destroys to a stream name derived at runtime by the stream invocation. Okay, all I had to do was restart the Rails application. Uh, I'm not sure how long I'd had it running, but it had been a while, and it has been running since long before I started this stream. So now we have this whole functionality tied together. So you can see we can go to a ramble, we create a to-do list. When it's ready, we have a link to view the result. So what I do to change this in the future is maybe I would make, add a little bit of JavaScript to go ahead and when we create that to-do list, go ahead and navigate to the to-do list automatically instead of having the user need to 
click on it to go see it because obviously that's all they're waiting for here. But this was live coded, okay? Um, there's more tests that I could do. There's more, there's definitely some more that we could do here, but this is me implementing this for the first time. And I just wanted to show you how easy it can be. We ran into a couple little wrinkles along the way where I had some typos. Uh, I let the autocomplete AI maybe get a little bit ahead of itself. But all in all, this is a great experience for learning for the first time how to uh, broadcast refreshes. So let's recap very quickly. You can broadcast anything that happens to this record. And all you do is you put this little tag in your view that you want to update based on that record and Turbo handles the rest. It's all magic. It's all behind the scenes. Uh, it happens over a web socket. It pushes uh, these refreshes directly to you and it automatically changes only what it needs to change in your browser to make this totally seamless. So it looks like it all happened in your browser, but really it was your typical Rails setup. So you get the benefits of everything you know about Rails applying in this situation with the awesome user experience that just a little bit of JavaScript pizzazz can afford. So with that, I think I'm going to leave you with this to chew on and uh, let me know if you'd like to see more things like this in the future a little bit more live coding, a little bit more exploratory, a little bit more uh, risky in that, you know, this could have gone any number of ways uh, if it didn't work out, but it did work out. And I hope to see you next time. And I will see you next time, or at least more likely if you like this video and subscribe, follow me uh, wherever you're at, follow me on Twitter, follow me on, uh, subscribe on YouTube, and uh, you have a beautiful rest of your day.